Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Meet Touchstone Essentials Live Product Training Edition. I'm here with Cindy Clement tonight, who is our master instructor. Wow, a new picture, too, I see. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one. Um, for those that don't know Cindy, Cindy is an acclaimed speaker, published author, nutritionist, herbalist, adjunct professor. As we always say, she teaches the doctors nutrition. We're excited to have her on here. She's been doing this for 40 years, and I've known, I've known Cindy for Boy, almost 30 years now, Cindy. I know, That's I know. amazing. So excited to have Cindy on, and she's going to talk tonight about calming and overactive immune system. This is going to be an incredible topic, uh, one that's very interesting. I'm sure a lot, of, uh, a lot of people are excited to learn and to hear about this, but you've got to tell us a little bit about this uh, picture. Okay, I, it made me laugh. We took our granddaughter, Michael and I take her to... Um, uh, Lake Huron every year, one of the Great Lakes, and we had a little verbo we were staying in. It was a little musty. And when she had been sneezing a little bit and drippy nose, and I went downstairs to get her some vitamin C. When I came back upstairs, she had done this because her nose had been dripping so much. And it just made me laugh. I found her like that. <laughs> and I just thought it was a perfect image for tonight's topic because this is an example of what an overactive immune system did. Her oh, nice. It perceived that little bit of mustiness as something threatening. And so her body went into the process of getting it out. So I, I thought, oh, wow, that's a great that's, for tonight. <laughs> that is interesting. I like that. Well, what? I want to, before we uh, turn the time over to you, um, I want to make sure everybody knows about your book, um, Your Body's Environmental Chemical Burden. Uh, this is a, an excellent book, ladies and gentlemen, that if you haven't heard about it, you're going to want to get this and make sure that you learn the information. There's so much information that goes right along with what we teach at Touchstone Essentials and will help you out uh, to understand our products, understand what we do, and, and ultimately to, to help you share with other people so that they can get well. Yep. So with that, Cindy, we'll turn the time over to you to talk about uh, an overactive immune system. You got it. You got it. Yes, that is tonight's uh, product education. And I'm delighted to share this with you. I just worked on it, kind of tweaked it a little bit before tonight. So let's get going. So um, an overactive immune response, it occurs when our immune system and this is why the picture of Lillian, it mistakenly recognizes a fairly innocent foreign substance as harmful. And that's what her immune system was doing. And when this occurs, the immune system goes into this overdrive and it releases histamines and leukotrienes. And the majority of those substances occur in our nose and our eyes and our, our lungs. And thus, those are the ones that are most affected. Now, histamines are simply chemicals that our immune system makes to get rid of something that's bothering it so they can make you sneeze or tear up or drip or itch whatever it takes to get that job done and and as i mentioned histamines are part of the body's defense system now the leukotrienes on the other hand what they do is they cause a a production of excess mucus and fluid so that the body can either cough or sneeze out the offensive substance if if need be so Overactive immune responses are truly on the rise, and the it's called the NHNES. It's the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. They do it every year on different topics. They found that more than 20% of the population in the U.S. is now affected. Folks, that's, a, that's crazy. That's one out of every five people. Now, because 70% of our immune system is in our gut, we might have to take a look at the microbiome, but this rise in an overactive immune response could also be coming from a compromised immune system. One reason uh, more of us in the U.S. Are, ex are experiencing this immune sensitivity 
may be due to these adverse physical reactions due to even low levels, just low levels of common chemicals from these environmental sources. But we also have to consider our highly processed foods, our low fiber diets, the overuse of antibiotics, and then we throw stress into the mix. And then these immune sensitivities can also be the result of something called multiple chemical sensitivities. Uh, MCS is for short, but it's also referred to as an environmental illness or a sick building syndrome or simply just a chemical, simple chemical uh, intolerance. So the symptoms of an over uh, overactive immune response or multiple chemical sensitivity, all of those things include things like asthma or congestion, even dizziness or fatigue, headaches, uh, hypersensitivity to smells, muscles or joint pain, uh, nausea, rashes, uh, red watery eyes, swollen lymph nodes. Oh, and folks, there are so many of these symptoms. So I want to familiarize you with the term called TILT, T-I-L-T. This is an acronym for Toxicant Induced Loss of tolerance. And this is when the body's detoxification systems become completely overwhelmed. And this tilt, as we call it, can produce this constellation of symptoms as you're looking at on this slide. And most often when people go to the doctor uh, in Western medicine with a list of symptoms like this, this constellation of symptoms, as they call it, the medical profession isn't able to diagnose their patients and they might tell them, oh, it's all in your head, or they might try to find out the underlying cause. There is a very strong movement of new doctors coming in that are specializing in environmental medicine. They're going to be called environmental medical doctors because of the toxicity that is affecting everyone so greatly. So it's a brand new field of medicine, but of course it will grow as you'll see as we get, get started here. So there are many causes that are under study for multiple chemical sensitivity, for this tilt, for this overactive immune response. And the first one, of course, is inflammation. And inflammation is due to that expression of that amplified immune response. Number two, they're looking at what they call the limbic system dysfunction, because continued exposure to these toxicants can make the nerve networks in the brain more sensitive to these environmental stressors. Now, number three is our immune system dysfunction. And this has, again, been observed due to the exposure to these synthetic chemicals. And researchers have also found that even the fine particulate matter, the PM2 that's in our air outside, can also be a trigger for inflammatory or uh, what we call cytotoxic effects. Now, if you ever wonder, well, how would I know what, what the particulate matter is in the air? Interestingly enough, if you have a smartphone, you can get an app. Let me just see what it is called real quick. I think it's just called Air Quality. Or you can use the Weather Channel app. And if you scroll down on your Weather Channel app, you'll come to an area with a little circle and it'll say PM or ozone. And you can check the quality of the air that way. So what is this thing called? It's called Air Now. So you can download that. So for instance, when it's a uh, when the particulate matter is really high and the ozone is really high, those are the days you're going to want to keep those windows closed so that you're not bringing that into the home or run an air purifier in your home. So this particulate matter can be really a trigger for some of these um, allergic responses or overactive immune response in the body. 
Now, I mentioned what's called the, the cytotoxic effects. Cytokines are actually a type of protein that's made by certain immune cells and even non-immune cells, and they have varying effects on the immune system. Some of these cytokines stimulate the immune system, and some of the other ones slow it down. So another cause under uh, of this um, um, causes under study, as they call it, for immune overactive immune system is oxidative stress. And that can provoke a real extreme sensitivity to chemicals um, resulting in what we call an increased blood barrier permeability. So what's happening is those toxicants are getting through our blood and into our organ areas, which then of course increase uh, the access of these chemicals to our brain, which is our, in our central nervous system. And when it does so, it decreases our natural detoxification processes, all the while increasing that hypersensitivity. Now, of course, the last one that we've got here are is there have been numerous theories that are proposing that some individuals are genetically predisposed to this hypersensitivity, to this overactive immune response. And one of the concepts uh, is that these individuals have fewer or less effective enzymes for detoxifying these chemicals and metabolizing drugs, prescription drugs, and this thereby increases the development of these numerous symptoms that people have. Now, years ago, I was part of a study through the University of Michigan, and it was called Genes for Good. And I was at the, at the end of this study, which was basically giving them our saliva and answering a lot of questions. At the end of the study, I was given my entire genome, which of course is a complete set of my DNA. Now I do have problems with hypersensitivity. Of course, that's why I'm teaching this class for others, but my DNA results showed that I had a genetic deficiency in five different SNPs relating to those enzymes that we need for detoxification. Now a SNP is just a variation in the DNA a sequence. But all of these genetic deficiencies, all five of them related to an impaired chemical metabolism of both environmental toxicants as well as drugs. And so therefore, I really strive to avoid drugs and toxicants as much as possible. And I think I'm doing pretty good because next month I will be making my, start my journey on my 71st trip around the sun. And I'm not on any perspective. Uh, prescription medications whatsoever. And while I wrote that book, I learned so much about how to avoid those toxicants. So I'm doing a fairly good job there as well. So um, it's just interesting for, my to, for me to finally realize about eight years ago, why I was so hypersensitive to smells and things like that with this overactive immune system. So when it comes to diet, more and more research is showing a link between the foods that we eat, the things that we drink, and this overactive immune system response. The wrong kinds of foods, of course, are known to spark this overactive immune response and or stimulate that inflammation in the body. And of course, these foods include really highly processed foods or dyes, um, um, additives, preservatives, fast food. But also when our diets are lacking essential healthy nutrients and fiber um, and, and um, not only are we lacking that, but, but we're eating a diet with a lot of processed ingredients and sugar, those reactions in those people tend to increase. So not only do I have those deficits in my DNA, but my parents owned what was back in the in the uh, 50s and 60s called a party store. And it wasn't where you went to get paper plates. You went to a party store to get junk food. So throughout my childhood, our diet was junk. We had chocolate milk and these things called ding dong donuts for breakfast. And 
my mother would pack a lunch and we would have an orange soda and some kind of chips and another fudge brownie. And I mean, oh my goodness, the foods that we ate were just ridiculous. In fact, my diet was so poor growing up that it's one of the things that drove me to become a nutritionist and herbalist in order to overcome all of these childhood illnesses and the many hospitalizations that I had. And I successfully did so. So let's talk about some of those foods that can support that healthy immune response. And the first one would be the omega-3 fatty acids. And what they do is they decrease the production of many of those potent compounds that the body manufactures in that immune response that are involved in inflammation that results in that overactive immune response. So to quiet down that response, we need to consume more fats rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And omega-3 fatty acids are found in such things as nuts and greens and, and ground flaxseed. These and these foods, of course, are found in organic super protein, in wellspring, as well as in essentials. Now, the association between uh, dietary antioxidant intake and that overactive immune response, people have been studying that for many, many, many years. Now, because oxidation reactions are really commonplace among those inflammatory processes, the antioxidants can either mitigate or prevent the severity of those reactions. And the most promising of all the antioxidants are the flavonoids. And what flavonoids are, are plant pigments that give fruits and vegetables those brilliant colors. And the flavonoids help to, to regulate cellular activity and then fight off those free radicals that cause that oxidative stress in the body. So in simpler terms, they help your body function more efficiently, all the while protecting it against those everyday toxins and stressors. Um, so we need to increase our intake of natural flavonoids and antioxidants by eating more organic fruits, especially those very brilliant, brilliantly colored berries and, and vegetables. So luckily, antioxidants and flavonoid foods are found in Super Green Juice, in Super Greens Plus D, as well as essentials. Now, protein. Protein is one of those dietary factors that can positively impact your immune system. So for your body to, to perform optimally, you need to get enough of that protein. Now, I've been a vegetarian for quite a while, but when I had COVID, just back around Christmas time, I craved turkey meat because I knew that I needed the extra protein to create additional immune cells quickly. And I knew what my body was trying to tell me because one of my mentors in the 1970s always taught us to listen to our body. And so I ate turkey for two days and I've had no desire for any kind of meat since then. So it's just really interesting if you really pay attention to your body, it will typically tell you what it needs. Now, while most of the attention on protein does center on its, its role in, in building and repairing muscle tissue uh, that can be damaged during exercise or even building muscle tissue as you grow older, Protein really has several crucial roles in the body. It, it provides a structure for our organs, for it, it's good for our hair, our skin, our nails. It helps to keep our, our hormones balanced. It, it forms new cells and it does support that healthy immune response. So protein foods are found in organic super protein, super green juice, wellspring, super greens plus D, as well as essentials. Because remember, protein doesn't just have to come from animals. The plant kingdom is very rich in protein as well. Now we learned tonight that exposure to certain chemicals can certainly cause these, these reactions similar to those that one experiences with that overactive immune response. So chemicals can cause sensitivity um, uh, uh, 
let me put it this way, chemicals that can cause sensitivity include things that are found in, in things like carpet or plastics or uh, paint or shellacs or lacquer or any of that kind of thing. If you're doing home repairs, it can be in cigarette smoke, in air fresheners or air deodorizers. It can be in our personal care products. It can be in in asphalt uh, pavement. It can be in the tar fumes when they're doing roofing or road work. It can come from uh, diesel or gasoline exhaust and fuel and dry cleaning and household cleaners, insecticides, art supplies. Folks, the list goes on and on. So in order to experience that highest level of our health, it's imperative imperative that we detoxify on a daily basis because we are continuously exposed to toxicants every single day. In fact, no one, not even the EPA knows how many chemicals are in use today. Although more than 85,000 chemicals were grandfathered in under the Toxic Substances Control Act of the 1970s. So really what we need to do is become very conscious of the environmental toxicants that are in our everyday life and remove them from our surroundings as much as possible. But we also need to increase our water intake dramatically because many of these chemicals are released in our urine and they also come through our skin when we sweat. But we also have to support our gut health. And of course, we need to detoxify our body. And what, what better way to do it than with the zeolites? Folks, in just seconds a day, with just a spray that tastes like water and nothing else, you can assist the body with its detoxification processes, just using the Pure Body and the Pure Body Extra. My granddaughter loves her Pure Body Extra. It stays right on the table and she loves squirting it in her mouth. It's one of the easiest things that I can give her. But don't forget about the fulvic minerals plus and a serving or two of that organic super fiber for that added detoxification benefits. So I want to, to summarize how we can support that overactive immune system. The first thing is, is we do have to manage our stress. And we've got other videos that you can watch, other presentations that talk about stress and what we can do with that. We can eat more of those nutrient-rich whole foods and get enough fiber. And we've probably got, we, I think we've done over 50 videos now. So you could just go and, and watch some of these other presentations. But we also have to get enough sleep. Did you know that there's a glymphatic system in your brain? And this is only comes alive and detoxes brain tissue while you are asleep. It doesn't happen when you're resting. It can only happen when you sleep. So if you want to detoxify your brain, you have to get a good night's sleep. We also have to engage in, in regular exercise or physical activity to get things moving around and get these toxicants kind of mobilized so we can get them out of the tissue. And then of course, detoxify on a, a daily basis, but finally get those brightly colored organic plants in our diet. So I hope you enjoyed our presentation this evening, and I'd love for you to mark your planners for February 2nd. What we're going to do that evening is take a really good look at the liver and the amazing processes that it goes through to keep us alive and to help our bodies detoxify. So thanks so much. Back to you, Craig. Thank you. What a wonderful presentation, Cindy. February 2nd is just next Thursday. I know. So, so <laughs> don't let that pass you by. It's next Thursday. So we'll be back again next Thursday to learn all about the liver. Um, I'm excited about that presentation. It should be a wonderful presentation. Um, and after that, uh, we've got one on the 26th of February. Can you remind me what that topic is? Do you remember? We'll let them know next week. That's okay. After, um, the, after the liver, we're going to look at the amazing brain. And we're going to talk all about just the brain and the areas of the brain and what it does. And again, we'll talk about the glymphatics and how to detoxify a brain. It's kind of a fun presentation. So the brain, I'm excited about that one. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Thank you, Cindy. We appreciate you as always. Thank you for your expertise and your, your uh, wonderful 
wonderful way that you present uh, the information so that we understand it so well. Always so, a pleasure, Craig. Always thank a pleasure. Thank you again. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here tonight. We appreciate your attendance. Um, as always, these are recorded and they are put on the website for you to look at and review at any moment. So watch for this one to be there as well. Thank you again and have a wonderful night, everybody. Take night. Bye-bye.